Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to use a Unity WebGL build with Squarespace. Let's get started. First, we need a Unity WebGL build. This is just a sample application here. Next, we need a Squarespace account. And lastly, we'll be using Amazon S3 to host our Unity WebGL build. And I will explain why I'm using this. Let's get started with Squarespace. Just create a, an account and a website. And this website uh, can be either an empty site, or in this case, I just used a template, which basically fills everything up with a lot of placeholder content. Let's go to Pages. And here, you can either create a new page under Main Navigation, which means it shows up here in the navigation bar, or we can scroll down and go to Not Linked, Create a Page. We choose an empty page, and we call it WebGL test, or whatever you prefer. Okay, we have a text field here, and we simply can start typing. We highlight whatever we just typed, and we click on Edit Link. I just want to show you what it would look like if we were actually to use Squarespace to host our WebGL build. Now you simply, instead of linking anything, you click on files. And this is the interface you could theoretically use to upload files to Squarespace. Now, there's lots of limitations and you can drag and drop files in here, but using folders, uploading a lot of files at the same time and uh, putting them in an order so that you actually know which file belongs to which Unity build is really difficult. And there's also a limitation of 20 megabytes per file. So there's uh, really much, much better places to host your Unity WebGL build. Now, there's other tutorials that suggest using Dropbox, using the public photo on Dropbox, but I've been using Amazon AWS S3 for a long time and I'm quite happy with it. So I will show you how to use Amazon S3. All right, get out of here and let's head over to Amazon. Now you can simply sign up for a free account and there is a free tier of services for the first year for new accounts. And uh, that means you most likely won't have to pay anything for at least a year. And even after that year, it is very, very affordable. So under storage here, you find Amazon S3, or if you've visited it recently, you can just find it up here and you click on S3. Now S3 is made up of buckets. Those are basically your root folders, it means, um, the bucket decides where it's being hosted, or you decide where you want to host it, depending on where you think your audience is, who's going to visit uh, or download those files. And in this case, I will just leave it as the default US East region. Um, let's put in a bucket name of WebGL123, and we click Next. We can leave all those properties as they are. The only thing that's really important is the Manage Public Permissions. And in this case, we will just leave it as it is, and we will not grant public read access to this bucket. Instead, we will later just select individual files that will have public read access. And we create the bucket. Let's head in here, and we can start creating folders. So this is really just like a, a normal hierarchy where you can create folders for each of your WebGL builds in case you have multiple. And I will just call this folder here, build one. Go into this folder, and next we can just upload our files from Unity. Let's head over to Unity. Once your application is ready, go to Build Settings, make sure it's set to WebGL as a platform, and then just build it. I already have my files here. So what's being created is a build folder, a template data folder, and an index.html file. Let's have a look at the index.html file first. I have it open here in uh, Visual Studio, and we can change basic things like the name of our application. Change that. And one other thing that I usually do is just, I get rid of the footer. But you can make a lot of other changes. One other thing I usually do is change the height slightly, but really all of those things are up to you. There is no requirement to make any changes. All right, 
Now, once we have those files, click on upload here. And what we'll, we'll do is we we'll just select everything and drag it over onto this window and this upload window. And as we can see, we can simply upload all of those at the same time. And again, we have the option here to grant a public access rights to these objects altogether, but instead we will do this individually later. So we can just click Next, we can click Upload. All of these uh, permissions here are not relevant to us. And we wait for the upload. Once the files are uploaded, we can go back to Squarespace and we insert a code field here. So what you do is, in order to insert something new, you either click on this plus up here, or you click on one of these black bubbles, and the selection pops up, and we simply select code. Now, this code here we have to replace with our own. Code is simply an iframe. Now, I will post this code under this video, so you can just simply copy and paste it. The only thing you need to change is you have to adjust the URL here. And this is the URL of your index.html file. Let's go back to S3, click on index.html, and this window pops up, and we simply choose right-click copy link address. And we paste it in here. Now we can click apply. Obviously, you can change all of these things here to customize what your window looks like. And for now, we just click save. And we can see it says access denied, access denied. And that is because we have not given the application um, the permission to access our files over here, since none of these are given public access rights. We can start with the index.html file because that is the, this is the first uh, file that the application accesses. So again, we click on the index.html, this window comes up, and down here we see permissions. Click on this. At the very bottom here, we see public access. We click on everyone. And here we just tick read object. One of the reasons why we don't give access at the very beginning when we create the bucket and the folders is because if we do that, we also give everybody access to the, um, what it's called ACL. So basically people then have the option to change the permissions of this object by the, themselves. And we don't want to do that. We as the owner want to be the only ones who have control over who else accesses the files. All right, let's click save. Go back to our build. Now we can check here, but nothing has changed yet. We can go back into edit mode. And still nothing is loading. We don't get any error messages anymore, but right now nothing is happening. All right, next we have to go into our build folder. And all of these files also need public read access. Again, go through the same procedure. Click on the file, we go to permissions, and at the bottom here, public access, and we check read object. We do this for every single file in this folder. You can also see that the file has already been, been changed, because now it says two grantees down here. This is one, us, the owner, second, it is everyone else. Last file. Okay, go back to our build. And again, nothing has changed. Something's not working yet. In fact, we actually get an error message. And I've seen this error message come up uh, when people ask questions online, and it has one simple reason we can see here uncalled reference error unity progress progress is not defined okay that's the problem 
And the last thing that we have to do before our build actually works, we have to go into template data. And we also have to give public access to unityprogress.js. Right? Let's have a look. What happens now? Oh, something's coming up. Well, I can already tell you, we were successful. All the files that needed public access now have public access and our application loads normally. The only thing that's left to do is you can customize the code of your iframe and of your uh, index.html file to determine how the application behaves, whether it should be able to change to full screen mode and how it's being uh, rendered on the screen, how large it is, et cetera, et cetera. But all those things are minor details. The most important thing is you got your application to render within Squarespace. Simply click Save. And now if you publish your website, you can actually use your WebGL player. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. See you next time.